NASA official declined SpaceX Dragon to rescue NASA's Hubble telescope. You heard right. The announcement is given after two years with almost no word from NASA on their opinion. But why? Why did NASA refuse such a good and free opportunity to save its most critical scientific mission? What do the astronauts and experts think about NASA's decision? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. For those living under a rock, after three decades of serving as a prime observer in space, NASA's Hubble telescope alarms that it will retire around 2034. That's when the telescope, which is slowly drifting down toward Earth, is expected to burn up as it plunges through the atmosphere. In 2022, Jared Isaacman, sponsoring Polaris Dawn, basically said he'd foot the bill to take a maintenance crew aboard SpaceX Dragon to Hubble. Within the Polaris Dawn framework, he would partner with SpaceX to perform a boost to Hubble and possibly service it like NASA used to do, all for free. However, due to the high risk of the mission, NASA officials and study reviewers are not yet sold on the need for it. The national agency has avoided mentioning it for two years, but now they have broken their silence. The result is not much positive. According to emails obtained by NPR through the Freedom of Information Act, it sounds like there is not a lot of support from the agency and former team members for the mission. About a year ago, longtime Hubble experts were asked to weigh in. They expressed concerns about the risks of what was being proposed. Take, for example, Andrew Fustel, who performed three spacewalks to refurbish Hubble in 2009, says no one has gone on a spacewalk from a SpaceX capsule yet, and the company has only just developed its spacewalking suits, so NASA has no history on which to base future predictions on success. He highly recommends having a demonstration of the team's spacewalking, as well as the functionality of the new suit, to understand how these capabilities might be compatible with a Hubble repair. In an email to Patrick Krauss, the project manager for the Hubble Space Telescope mission, Keith Kalinowski, a retired Hubble operations expert, said that he would be all in favor of a well-planned mission to reboost the telescope and install an enhancement to its pointing control system if it would profitably extend the telescope's science life. But a Polaris spacewalk to do that, Kalinowski wrote, is unnecessary and risky. On the other hand, Isaac Mann supposed that this trip to Hubble should be a no-brainer but this should be an easy risk or reward decision. In a best case scenario, a successful private mission could improve Hubble's ability to point at celestial objects and by boosting its orbit, extend its life by years. In a worst case scenario, however, an accident could leave the multi-billion dollar telescope broken or even more tragically, tethered to the dead bodies of the astronauts sent to repair it. So why did NASA's officials decline this? There is no doubt that Isaac Mann's suggestion benefits the government a lot. For 15 years, NASA's mission to extend Hubble's life has not been in the works, mainly due to competing priorities and budget constraints. As you know, Hubble is one of the two most expensive NASA astrophysics missions to operate after the James Webb Space Telescope. $900 million is the total cost to service Hubble the last time with the shuttle and crew of seven. However, everything has changed now given that the national agency has an extremely limited budget as it is. In 2023, with the pressure of budget cuts, NASA could request only $93.3 million for Hubble in its fiscal year 2024 budget proposal. Surely this amount is not enough for a rescue mission on Hubble. Therefore, when NASA held a press briefing with Isaac Mann and a SpaceX representative to reveal an agreement to study this idea, the space community was abuzz. There is nothing better than a private party saving the National Telescope at their own expense. NASA is offered a free ride or vehicle to perform the boost to extend Hubble's life. Apparently, the budget isn't much of an issue this time. The issue this time appears to be whether or not NASA is going to be too timid to risk a potential mishap to extend the life of the Hubble. First and foremost, the SpaceX capsule has no airlock. Once the astronauts step outside, the entire interior will have to be depressurized and exposed to the vacuum of space when the hatch opens. This requires careful test operations on SpaceX's new EVA suit. We hope to learn an awful lot about our suit and the operation associated with it. Isaacman discussed the planned extrafecular activity, or EVA. It's the first commercial EVA. It's the first time you don't have, you know, government astronauts undertaking such a mission. No robotic arm is also a big deal. 
This component was equipped on the space shuttle helping to retrieve the telescope and firmly mount the instrument onto a platform in the shuttle's huge cargo bay. The astronaut could use this platform to revolve and position the telescope to make their spacewalking easier. Dragons do not have such parts, so they will float in space and make work difficult. Furthermore, it can cause fatal accidents for astronauts in risky environments like space. How do you get yourself to a place where you are able to use both your arms and hands to do something with your feet fixed? That's going to be a challenge, I think, says Scott Scooter Altman, an aviator and astronaut who commanded two servicing missions to Hubble. It was a challenge for us. NASA is very familiar with the Hubble rescue missions with the dedicated vehicle and experienced astronauts. Not by accident, why the five Hubble servicing missions flown by NASA astronauts were some of the most prestigious space missions ever. Clearly, they do not dare to risk its expensive telescope on a new and private mission like Polaris. The failure could threaten Hubble's 10 more years of science that astronomers currently expect to enjoy. Anyway, according to the experts, Hubble is still extremely healthy. The instruments are working really well. Hubble's older instruments are expected to have greater than 90% reliability from now until 2030, and the newer instruments will have more than 95% reliability well into the 30s. Nevertheless, according to Dana Wagel, NASA's program manager for ISS SpaceX's view of risks and willingness to accept risk is considerably different than NASA's. Since Jared Isaacman's suggestion was unveiled, every one of the arguments he's heard against the Hubble proposal is that if you do an EVA, you know, there's a lot of risk in that. He argued that that risk is being taken by his group with the plans to proceed with private spacewalks no matter what. I would say, like, this is beyond logical. This is so obvious to do, said Isaacman. And if it's not, it's purely political on why it wouldn't be done. Regarding the lack of hardware, Keep in mind that during the shuttle's final servicing mission on Hubble, astronauts added a ring-like piece of docking hardware to the telescope to make it easier for some future spacecraft to latch on. Thanks to that, SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft would approach and dock with Hubble using this ring left. To be honest, the proposal to save Hubble is also advocated by many astronauts and experts. NASA can work with Congress and the administration to request funds for a Hubble reboost or enhancement mission using a commercial partner where NASA is in the driver's seat and the maturity of the space systems is higher and lower risk, said former astronaut John Grunsfeld, also on the review board. About if there is a need to boost Hubble now versus later, I'm very wary, truly, of predicting failures and I'll forever be a Hubble hugger. But there does come a time when you have to ask whether putting more money and effort into making more Hubble data might provide less return on investment than putting the same money and effort into new mission. Kalinowski, Hubble expert, wrote in an email to a Hubble manager at NASA. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.